And it's that time of the year again, and I'm not talking about Valentine's Day. Another Adam Jones signature guitar release day is upon us, addition two in the Epiphone Custom Arts Collection, Frank Frazetta's The Berserker, which can only mean one thing, new guitar day for the lucky 800 who were able to get their grubby mitts on one of these bad boys and drooling over YouTube videos day for the rest. So in case you are one of the lucky ones who was able to grab one of these bad boys, congratulations. And in case you're not, stick around because we are going to take this out of its box, take a detailed look at the specs, throw it on the workbench to take a look inside and plug it straight into a diesel VH4 using Adam Jones's settings for the authentic tool sound. So without further ado, Let's crack open the box. So this is a rather fetching Epiphone box. And here we go. Hopefully you can see this Adam Jones Epiphone Custom Arts Frank Frazetta. And here is the protector case. So here we go. This is the protector case. I'm a huge fan of these protector cases. So let me put it on the stand and actually put it the other way around. So you get to be the first ones to see it in all its glory. So let's flip the latches. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Here she is. There she is. Little foam thingy to protect the switch. And here's the back. Wow. So what do you think? I'm super impressed. I mean, the pictures just don't do it justice. I mean, the way these colors pop is out of this world. So let me just quickly grab the Mark Ryden one so we can see them side by side. So what do you think? The Berserker or the Veil of Beasts? Or both? Let me know in the comments below. So let's take a detailed look. So here she is in all her glory. So let's take it from the top. Large split diamond at the headstock, graph tuck nut straight out of the Gibson USA standard playbook, ebony fingerboard, as you would expect on a Les Paul Custom, beautiful silver burst finish, Pro Bucker Custom reverse mounted in the neck. Seymour Duncan distortion in the bridge. The silver burst going all around the guitar, even on the neck. Here's the volute and the custom art, courtesy of Adam Jones's wife. And here again, a detailed look at the back. All right, so without further ado, let's throw her on the workbench and take a look inside. So here we have her on the workbench. So this is the Epiphone branded protector case. I'm a huge fan of the protector cases, the historic protector cases. It comes with four TSA certified latches, which is great. And this is how she comes in the case. The interior is black. And uh, let's take a look at what case candy she comes with. So taking a look at the case candy, we have nothing really significant. A bunch of promotional materials, something to keep the moisture out. This passed the certificate on the 6th of August, 2022. I think that relates to the case. And we got a set of keys, that's it. So nothing spectacular. And this is the switch tip cover. Let's take a look at the guitar. I have removed the guitar from the case so that we get a better look. And let's start right here at the bottom. So we start with a pair of posi locks. One is right here and the other one is here. These are period correct specs. Now let's start with the most obvious thing and that is the finish. The finish is very nicely done. You've got this beautiful silver burst tear shape with the black perimeter going around the guitar. And the finish uh, is also replicated, the silver burst is also replicated here on the sides. We have seven ply binding here on the front of the guitar. In terms of controls, we have black speed knobs with thumb bleeders. 
Uh, in terms of hardware, we have nickel hardware. So this is a nickel stop tail with a uh, bridge, but this should be, I mean, on Adam Jones's guitar, it is a Nashville style bridge. This is an ABR style bridge because the adjustment screws are facing the pickups. On a Nashville bridge, the adjustment screws should be facing the stop tail. Here they're facing the pickups. So this would be an ABR style bridge. However, it is not mounted directly into the body. So it's not a true ABR and it's got a retention wire. So here we have the Seymour Duncan a distortion in the bridge, the reverse mounted custom bucker in the neck position. Here you have the pickup selector switch. And one funny thing that I notice is the hardware on the entire guitar is nickel. You have a nickel plated pickup cover, nickel plated bridge, nickel plated stop tail. However, this switch tip, let me just take it off, is chrome. So that you can see that when I put it against for example, the stop tail. Look at that. Can you see it? Not really, but take a look here. See? Take a look here. If I can get the camera to focus, this is chrome, this is nickel. So it's a funny oversight. This thing is probably plastic. That is why they were not able to make it in nickel, I, I assume. All right, moving on here, we got an ebony fingerboard with acrylic inlays that also includes an inlay at the first fret, which is typical for the Les Paul Custom, as opposed to the standard. Here we have a Les Paul Custom truss rod cover, the split diamond inlay in the headstock. This is the large split diamond with the Epiphone logo, the five ply binding, and vintage style machine heads. We have a GraphTech nut, and uh, let me just go ahead and check the neck relief and check how well the nut is cut. So let's check the action height. So we're looking at, we're looking at 225 at the 12, which is pretty high. Let me also check the neck relief real quick so that I can tell you, I cannot get a good shot because I need two hands for this, but the uh, neck is fairly straight. So probably won't need much adjusting. What this guitar will need is adjusting at the bridge. So before we flip the guitar over, let's check the GraphTech nut. I press down here at the third fret and see how much play we have here. And we have a bit of play, so the nut is cut a bit shallow, which is easily fixed. It's much better than if it was cut too deep. All right, let's take a look at the back of the guitar. So here we have the back of the guitar. Here's the Berserker. Here we have some gold lettering on the control cavity cover. Is this embossed? Let me just check. No, it's not embossed. It says Epiphone for every stage. Adam Jones Art Collection. The Berserker by Frazetta. Now this is Frazetta's logo. So interestingly, the Berserker actually is inspired by a Robert E. Howard novel called Conan the Conqueror, which inspired the 1982 action movie, which starred none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that is a very interesting connection that I had no idea was there. And I have to say that this artwork looks much better in real life and the colors are really vibrant, they pop, and it looks much better than in the stock photos or actually in the footage that I have seen. This definitely is a sight to behold. So this is something that Epiphone has taken straight out of the acoustic guitar playbook. Because in the world of acoustic guitars, acoustic guitars are really, really bland from the front, but the magic really happens on the backside. And this is the same case with the Epiphones now. I was also thinking about how they managed to get the artwork to stick to the back of the guitar. I'm thinking they do it similarly to when they put veneer on the top, which is a very thin sheet of wood, and they just glue it to the top. So I'm assuming they take a paper that works well with polyurethane top coat, and they just reproduce the painting on that paper, then glue it to the back of the guitar, and then top coat over it. If you know how they actually do it, do let me know in the comments below. All right, moving on here. Here we have the five ply binding. Moving on to the neck, we have the silver burst finish on the neck, which is very nice. Moving on here, we have the volute, which is also period correct. A sticker that says inspection. And we have the handcrafted in China sticker and some custom artwork by Adam Jones's wife and machine heads with the embossed serial. So, that concludes it. Let's take a look inside the guitar. Let's take a look inside the control cavities. Let's take the strings off and let, let's also look inside the pickup cavities. Okay, and here we have an inside look at the guitar. So let's start with the stop tail. So we have an Epiphone branded stop tail. 
And we have an Epiphone branded bridge, which, as I mentioned, is facing the other way because on Adam's guitar, it is facing that way, and here it is facing this way. The routes look nice and clean. We have a sticker here that says Adam 4LP, and there's some markings on there, one, three. This is probably the remnant of an A, and this is probably a J right here. The other route says AJ in bold letters on the long neck tenon. Nice, you see the paint here. So let's take a look at the pickups. So here we have the Seymour Duncan SH6B in the bridge, the Seymour Duncan distortion. And in the neck, we have the reverse mounted Pro Bucker Custom. Let's take a look at the fretboard. The fretboard is true ebony. And there's a bit of streaking here, which is uh, something that tells you this is the lower tier ebony. This not mean, it does not mean that this is the lower quality. The quality is the same, however, the Premium ebony is required to be very consistent and dark, and the streaking is considered inferior tier. However, Fender used that to great effect in their guitars, and they actually managed to sell guitars with fretboards with streaky ebony for a premium, so go figure. So this could be considered an inferior or a superior feature, depending on how you look at it. The fretwork, however, is really good. There are no jagged edges, and the frets are nicely rounded and polished, so Good job, Epiphone. Now let's take a look at the neck measurements. So here we have the calipers. Let's measure the nut width. And taking a look at the neck measurements, we have 42.7 millimeters at the nut, which increases to 52.81 at the 12th. And the depth is 24.9 at the 12th. And we're getting 22.3 at the first. And let's take a look at the truss rod cavity. No surprises here. Let's take the pickup readings and turn the guitar over. So we're reading 12.19 in the neck position. And we're getting 15.94 in the bridge. Wow, these are some hot pickups. So here we have the back of the guitar. Here's the control cavity with CTS pots and the large orange drop capacitors. The wiring looks decent enough. And here we have the pickup selector cavity again. Everything is drilled nicely. There's an M right here. No surprises, everything good. One thing I wanna point out is, hopefully you will be able to see this. Here, you can see the mahogany. Hopefully get, I can get the camera to focus. So, yeah, here you, can, you should be able to see it. Wait, I'm not gonna put the pen in there. So you see the mahogany, then you see a dark, very thin, dark layer. That is the paper that carries the artwork and then you have the top coat over it. So it is probably in all likelihood the way I predicted. Mahogany, layer of paper with the artwork and then top coat over it. So well done, Epiphone. All right, now let's string her up, intonate her, weigh her, and then run her through her paces. And as far as weight goes, she clocks in 4.4 kg. And this is the way we will hear her. So we're going to go into a diesel VH4 on channel 3 with Adam Jones's settings into a V30 loaded Marshall cabinet. And the sound will be picked up by a Royer mic and an SM57. So let's go. <laughs>
So with the cat out of the bag and the berserker out of the box, what are your thoughts? Do let me know in the comments below and I will give you some food for thought. First, you have to really understand what this guitar is and more importantly, what it is not. This is not a working musician's budget option of a custom Les Paul with Adam Jones's specs. Instead, this is a highly limited, highly collectible guitar. And as such, you will probably not be seeing these taken to your local pub gigs, getting all beat up and dinged up. Instead, these guitars will most likely spend their lives in controlled home studio or pro studio environments because these are professional instruments after all. And since these are collector items, they will probably hold their value or maybe even increase their value on the resale market. The second point to be made here is that Epiphone did not drop the ball on this one. The build quality, the craftsmanship, the way the guitar feels and handles, the way it sounds, and even the case, the protector case. I mean, there's nothing to fault here. And there are countless examples in history where a company has raised the bar of expectations so high that they set themselves up for failure even before the product was launched. In this case, Epiphone was really smart about it. They just teased it and they only released it after they knew they had something spectacular on their hands. And I can tell you, it is just stunning. In person, it looks much better than on the photos. Which leads me to the third point, and that is credit should be given to Adam Jones because he could have just gone the standard cash grab route, and that is just take the specs of your existing guitar, slap it onto an import guitar, make it as cheap as humanly possible and sell as many boatloads as possible. Instead, he decided to go in the opposite direction. And as the guy who is responsible for most of Tool's visual art, he decided to combine the visual and the musical aspect by paying homage to his favorite visual artists. And that is something really cool and something really unique. And by doing that, Adam Jones and Gibson via Epiphone managed to pull off something really extraordinary. And that is to turn something affordable into something desirable. And that is no small feat. So good job, Epiphone. So thank you very much for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.